What I want to think about is the developer contributions. And I think really that's the important thing. There are, there are two, two types. We've got section 106, which are what we call leave agreements. And these are, th these, are, these are tools used by local planning authorities uh, alongside planning conditions, okay? Now planning conditions are set um, as part of the granting of planning permission, but there are situations where there's a need need for a legal agreement because um, the requirements are such that a lot of the um, things that need to be done to make a, an unacceptable planning application accepting planning terms will be off-site. And a planning condition can only be applied to, to the area what we call within the red boundary. The red boundary is the site identified in the planning application. So anything that's off-site, uh, beyond the red boundary, has to be delivered, not by a planning condition, because that's illegal. It has to be done by a, a legal agreement, and they are voluntary. Okay, so the applicant has to volunteer to in, enter an agreement with the planning authority as the other party. There might be other people that might have to be party, party to the party, as it were, and, and it might be landowners or, or because the land isn't necessarily owned by a single entity it might be several landowners and therefore um, they will be then duty bound to deliver whatever the agreement is um, if planning permission is granted and if development starts if if development doesn't start then you don't deliver anything if the planning permission is not granted then the se section 106 falls because it's not legal. So in that respect, you, you, the, the legal agreement needs to be signed as part of the application process. So it's not a, it's, the agreement is not an outcome from planning permission, the planning process, it's an input to the planning process. And it's then considered by the planning board who make the decision with regard to whether they should grant or not grant planning permission. So it's an input to the process and not an output from the process. So everybody knows up front what is the content of, of this section 106. Affordable housing is also delivered using section 106, but for very different reasons, because we're dealing with what is called a, a positive planning goal in the MPPF, the National Planning Policy Framework. And the National Planning Policy Framework says local authorities can seek affordable housing, but it's tailored to local circumstances. So each of your local planning authorities will use national guidance to tailor it to local circumstances. And you've got a, a, a Greater London Authority wide plan, and it sets out the requirements um, across um, the Greater London area, but it's also tailored to local circumstances. Beyond the um, Greater London, you've got individual planning authorities, and they will have different policies. Some will be seeking 20% affordable housing on sites more than 10 units um, or greater than 0.5 hectares. Um, others will be seeking 30%, 40%, even 50%. In some areas, they'll have zonal rates, where some areas will have zero uh, or 5% or 10%. And their rates, because through a whole plan viability assessment, they say, well, it's only possible to deliver that amount given the calculations. So there's a national policy, uh, and that national policy is then uh, adopted and, and managed and looked at and then applied locally and it, that's embraced in each of the local plans. So in that sense, um, if you want plan permission, these are the needs arising, the developer contributions, including the delivery of affordable housing, and that's expected. And that the appraisal methodology that should be done should be um, presented for what is called a full policy compliance scheme. 